Hello students, welcome to our class today. And today we would be talking about circulatory system in some more detail. So in the last class, we got to know about human blood, its various constituents, what are the various blood groups, how they all are interrelated and we also got to know about RH factor. So today we would again be discussing about RH factor in some more detail because we could not cover it in the last class. So we will take a bit of that as well. But before that we will be talking about circulatory system in general. So when we talk about circulatory system in humans, we talk about the pumping organ which is human heart. We talk about the blood vessels that we have and these blood vessels are, they are arteries, they are veins and they are interconnected with the help of capillary network. So we have arteries, veins and capillaries. But if we, if we talk about other organisms, let's say maybe a cockroach, maybe a fish or an earthworm, these organisms, they are not same just as humans, right? Because these are different animals, they belong to different phylums altogether. But we all share a common kingdom and that is kingdom animalia. So today we would be talking about what is the difference between two types of circulations that we see in amongst various animals. So let's just start with it and let's just get to know about it in more detail today. So when we talk about circulatory system, as you can see it here in the picture, we are talking about open circulatory system as of now. Now what does open circulatory system means? Well, open circulatory system means there are no blood vessels. There are no tubes, there are no fixed channels in which the blood is traveling. In fact, there is mixing of blood as well. So to help us understand circulatory system in a better way, today we shall start our discussion with blood vessels. So when we talk about blood vessels, we have three types of blood vessels and they are arteries followed by veins and then we have capillary network or capillaries. So talking about human blood vessels, we have arteries, we have veins and these two are connected with the help of capillary network. So talking about arteries, as you can see it here in the picture, arteries have a narrow lumen and their walls are thick, which means they have smaller opening inside them and the cavity in which the blood is flowing is actually narrow. So lumen means empty cavity inside the tube or the blood vessels. That lumen is narrow, why? Because the walls are thick when we talk about arteries and arteries they have to have a thick wall. The reason behind that is the blood flows at a higher pressure inside them. So the tube has to be strong enough to withstand that pressure. Talking about veins, veins have a bigger lumen as compared to the artery and the walls are less thick or they are thin as compared to the arteries. The reason behind that is the flow or the pressure with which the blood flows inside the veins is little less as compared to that of arteries. So there is less pressure which is being exerted on the walls of the blood vessel. So this is one difference that we talk about when we compare arteries and when we compare arteries with veins. So how are these tubes, they are connected to each other. There has to be a junction where they are supposed to meet. And why am I saying this? See, there is no way we empty our blood every day in the morning and we refill it with the help of a hose, right? So there is the same blood which is circulating inside my body 24 by 7. So all these tubes, they have to be interconnected somewhere. So that connection here is the capillary network. So when we talk about capillary network, we say these are thin blood vessels and they form a junction between arteries and veins. And this is the area where exchange of material takes place. So I hope you remember, we talked about alveoli in lungs. So alveoli, they had capillary network. So today we will establish the connection with that as well. 
and at that network what was happening there was exchange of gases which was taking place so now we are done with arteries we are done with veins and the connecting link between them is of course it is capillary network so this is how we maintain the complete circuit and this is how we help in circulation of blood inside our body now this is some brief introduction that we needed about these two blood vessels in fact these three blood vessels so we would be talking about them as and when required in the chapter but now let's just start with our discussion on circulatory pathways so when we talk about circulatory pathways as you can see it here in the picture the first thing that we are talking about here is open circulatory system in an open circulatory system the blood vessels arteries veins capillaries they are absent and the blood flows freely in fact all the organs are submerged into the blood bath so blood is mixed which means oxygenated and deoxygenated blood there is no distinction between them there is no way we can distinguish between them so they are not separate from each other they are mixed with each other there is one drawback which is related to open circulatory system and that drawback is there is no proper supply of oxygen to the body organs and that is something which is inefficient way of supplying oxygen to the organs which are of an animal which we are going to discuss just now so taking a look at this picture you can see that we have a grasshopper over here and if you can recollect from your chapter which is respiration we got to know that on the body of this animal we have tiny tiny pores everywhere and those pores are yes we call those pores as spiracles so these spiracles i'm just highlighting them over here these spiracles internally they are connected to a network of tubes so the main trachea and then it gets divided further and further now these tubes they act as the medium through which gaseous exchange takes place and internally these tubes are submerged in the blood so i hope you can recall the concept of hemocele which is body cavity which is filled with blood so these tubes are submerged in that and most importantly all the organs are also submerged in that blood so tubes they bring in oxygen that is being released into the blood simultaneously co2 is being removed from the blood so since the body plan the plan of construction of the animal is very simple and that is the reason that it does not have an elaborated network of blood vessels talking about pumping of the blood even if you talk about arthropods let's say for example a cockroach as well yes pumping of blood does happen so that we can ensure that the blood is keep on circulating inside the body so i hope now we know what is open circulatory system a system wherein we have a pumping organ however the blood vessels are absent and there is no division of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so the drawback of that we'll just recall that the drawback is there is insufficient supply of oxygen or the supply of oxygen is not in the required amounts but animal is not getting affected by that they are getting the oxygen which they need for their survival so let's just move ahead now and now we would be talking about closed circulatory system so when we talk about closed circulatory system we talk about a network of tubes a network of tubes which is responsible for carrying blood to all the parts of the body and in turn we supply oxygen and what do we collect we collect carbon dioxide from the tissues so you can recall that when we supply oxygen to the body cells what happens they take that oxygen up right so when they take that oxygen up what do they do with that oxygen simple they perform respiration correct so they perform respiration and the metabolic waste product of respiration is the toxic gas co2 that needs to be 
eliminate it. But here we need to establish one connection and that is our supply of blood has to go through lungs and there is a reason behind it. Heart is pumping the blood but what type of blood should heart be pumping? It should be pumping oxygenated blood and where does oxygenation takes place? Oxygenation takes place at the site wherever gaseous exchange is happening. So this is something that we need to take care of. Gaseous exchange can happen in lungs if we talk about humans. Other animals like frogs, they can respire through lungs as well. And at younger stage, they can respire through the moist skin as well. Okay, so let's take a look at it in some more detail. Let's discuss about gaseous exchange in various animals. And then we shall understand the difference between closed and open circulatory system. So talking about closed circulatory system, let's just take a look at fish for a while and then we shall move ahead. Why we are starting off from the fish? Because we believe that life originated from water. Though not the exact excuse that I'm taking over here, but I just wanted to connect you with the concept. So let's just start with the understanding of circulation in a fish. So if you take a look at the diagram over here, in this diagram, we have shown the mouth of the fish, which is actually acting like an inlet of water. So as soon as fish, they take in water into their mouth, they are supposed to redirect that water. And that water, where does it get redirected? Yes, it gets redirected towards the gills. Now, what is it that I have in the gills? Gills, if you take a look at it over the picture or in the picture, I'm highlighting it over here. Gills have supply of capillary. They have huge capillary network in them. And this is the site where exactly the gaseous exchange would take place. The oxygen which is dissolved in the water and is in higher concentration in water will get into the blood. And blood which has more of CO2 in it that gets diffused into the water. So now gaseous exchange has happened. Since gaseous exchange has happened now, what should happen next? We need to connect this system to the pumping system. And that system is the heart. So if you take a look at the diagram over here, you can easily see that there is one arrow which is bringing blood into the gills and after oxygenation has happened. So let's just make it O2 over here. So now oxygenation has happened. Post that, the blood is now being routed towards the heart. So after here, blood moves and it gets to my heart. Heart is a muscular organ which has the potential to generate electrical impulses and has the potential to generate pumping action. So it can pump the oxygenated blood into the entire body now. Fishes have a two-chambered heart and these chambers are atrium and a ventricle. Question, how do I decide which chamber is what? I mean, I can call this direction as upside down. I can call this direction as upside down. So what is the direction that I should pick? What is the convention that I should pick? So if you take a look at it over here, the heart of the fish, I'm roughly dividing it into two sections over here. So the chamber which is going to receive the blood from the body parts, we are going to call that chamber as an atria or an atrium. The chamber which is going to send blood to all the body parts, that chamber is known as a ventricle. So an atrium and a ventricle. Talking about fish, they just have one atria and they just have one ventricle, which clearly means that there is no division between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So that clearly states that blood is flowing in a mixed condition, okay? So there is no division between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So the blood is always mixed and now we know what is an atrium, what is a ventricle, 
how do we name it an atrium and how do we call it a ventricle. So after this, now we move on to the circulation in reptiles. Reptiles have a three-chambered heart and the only exception is a crocodile. So a crocodile has a four-chambered heart. And after this, if you come to aves, which is birds, so aves, they also have a four-chambered heart. But getting back to our discussion on reptiles. Reptiles, though they have a three-chambered heart, but what are these three chambers? Let's just name these three chambers. So if you take a look at the picture over here, you can see we have one and two. We have two atria and we have a common ventricle, which means though there is separation of blood in atria in terms of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. However, the common ventricle is mixing that blood up again, wherein in the case of crocodile, it varies slightly as compared to other reptiles. So again, we have a left atrium and we have a right atrium. Right. So these two chambers, they contract and they are going to pump all the blood into the ventricle. Why? Because ventricle is the chamber which is now supposed to contract and is supposed to pump blood to rest of the body. So the question here is, are we keeping the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood as separate? The answer to that would be no, we are not. Why? Because it is a common chamber for both the atrium and the blood is getting mixed. So the blood which is being supplied to the body organs is again mixed blood. So there is no division in oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So, so far we are done with what are the blood vessels? It is arteries, veins and capillaries. How do they differ from each other? What is the connection and what is the common link between them? Post that we got to know about blood circulation in fish having two chambered heart. Now we are done with blood circulation which is close circulation in of course fish and reptiles and reptiles have a three chambered heart. Post that we will start with our discussion in humans now. Humans on the contrary have a more elaborate and a more complex network of blood vessels and now we need to see how our pumping organ which is heart it comes into the action how various blood vessels are connected to it, what are the various directions in which the blood would flow. So talking about human circulatory system, you can see it in the picture, the most important organ that we have is human heart. Talking about human heart, it is the pumping organ and it helps in pumping the blood to all the body parts and in fact, it is this organ which is also receiving blood from various body parts. Now the question here is, how do I keep my heart protected or how it stays safe inside my body? It keeps on beating regularly, right? But do I feel it beating over here? How do I keep it insulated? So if you look at the picture, you can see there is sternum right above my heart and then there is rib cage. Commonly I call sternum as what? I call it as breastbone. It is the sternum which protects the internal organs and the ribcage which protects my internal organs. And what are those organs? Behind that you can see there are lungs as well and you can see that left lung has a depression in it so that it can help accommodate human heart. Now talking about human heart, apart from getting protection from the ribcage, it also has a cavity around it. Now that is a layer which is covering the whole heart. We call that layer as pericardium and that layer has a fluid in it and that fluid is pericardial fluid. The function of that fluid is to protect the heart from all sorts of mechanical injuries and most importantly you should not forget the muscular separation between thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity and we call it as diaphragm. 
So diaphragm is the muscular separation which divides my thoracic cavity and below diaphragm is my abdominal cavity. So my human heart, we all, our heart is located in thoracic cavity, slightly towards the left side, okay? So this is what we needed to know about human heart in brief. We would be talking about human heart in detail in our upcoming lecture and that is the place where we shall get to know about it in more detail and how various types of blood vessels are connected with it. So we will do it till here only in this lecture. Till then keep on revising what we have studied so far and then we shall take it further from here. Thank you. In this module we have learned what is the difference between two types of circulations. There are no blood vessels in open circulatory system. There are three types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, capillaries and blood flows with high pressure in arteries whereas in veins blood flows with low pressure.